everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come and eat. Listen diligently. How many of you can hear the sound of the shofar in the distance in your spirit? See, we're in the time period now where we need to be both where we're at positioned with regard to the fall feast days, but also eschatologically in the order of end time events. It's a big word, eschatology. It means the order of end times or the study of the order. Uh, basically, eschaton is a Greek word. It means, if I remember my, my Greek classes, but it, remain, it, it has to do with last things, the la last times or, or the last... The things in a, the, this last in a series of uh, order of things. And ology is this, has to do with the study of. Thank you. So it's a study of basically end, end time events. So we are, we are not only at the end of the summer here in this year, going into the fall, which is when the biblical feasts uh, begin. The fall harvest time, the harvest cycle. But we are also at the end of the age. I don't know how much time we have left. I really don't know. Nobody knows those things except the Father. But we know that we're closer than we were. And things are shaping up around the world. I don't make predictions. I don't have dates. I don't have any of that stuff. There's all kinds of people that have dreams and they have visions and all that. And they claim to know a lot of things. Well, I've seen a lot of that over the years. And I've seen it come and I've seen it go. So uh, if I ever get into those waters, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm on solid ground. Uh, that I've been given a revelation and it's been confirmed and all that. But I don't have that yet. And, but I know that we're in the end times. And the king is coming back. King Yeshua. That's our only hope. That's our only hope. Um, many times as I'm out and about in the business world, I'm talking to people. And they ask me, because I have a gospel sign on my truck and my name of my business is related to the gospel and so forth and so on. So people ask me and, and they get the Bible verses and they, they you know, I, I have various ways in my business about how I witness and present the gospel to people. I have Bible verses and I give them things and tracts and so forth. So we get talking about things. And I'm to the point now... Well, we'll talk about politics or the economy or, and often I work with a lot of older people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s who are wealthy, well-to-do, uh, successful people that are retired and many of them fought in some of the wars in the past and so forth and they've been through a lot. Many of them came through the Depression and World War II and so forth. And I asked them questions and we, we, we wonder, you know, I asked them, well, what do you think? And, or they ask me what I think about things. And I'm to the point now where I just about have a one word answer for everything. It, it, it sounds overly simplistic, but it's this. Yeshua. Or if we're going to say it properly, Yeshua. Putting the, the emphasis on the first, the first um, uh, vowel. Or the first consonant, I should say. Uh, syllable. <laughs> we'll get there. It is also a, a consonant. Anyway, so um, so uh, anyway, that, that's really my answer. I really get tired of, of, of people have all these answers. Well, you know, this party or this group or this political movement or whatever is the answer or this. It really isn't. It's just, it's, it's a band-aid, if, if that. But really, there is only one answer. And it's the king who's coming. It's the king. So we are people that need to be listening to the shofar. The sound of the shofar. Actually, this is the shofar that's sounding now. The shofar of repentance, waking up the sleepy, waking up the, the lukewarm, the Laodicean, waking up, all of us have areas of lukewarmness and Laodiceanism in our lives. It's easy to look at the other guy, but we need to look at ourselves. But then the king is coming back and he's more likely going to be sounding this shofar. This is the shofar of, of the coming king. This is the coronation shofar. Uh, this is a more jubilant sound. First comes this sound. And that's the sound of the 
the repentance and the brokenness and of teshuvah, of repentance and of confession, getting ready for the king to come. But the king is coming in power and glory. That's the sound of the king coming with his entourage. King Yeshua, king of kings. So the king is coming. And he's going to be accompanied by his bride, a warrior bride. I've talked about this in the past. But a warrior bride. A bride, those that, as I best understand, those that were in the first resurrection. We, we read about that in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 and a few other places. They're going to be on the first trip. They are those who keep his commandments and have the testimony of Yeshua. If you don't have the testimony of Yeshua or the faith of Yeshua, in other words, you don't understand the gospel message, you're not born again of the Spirit and moving in the direction of conforming your life to Yeshua. And if you're not walking in, in wholehearted compliance to the best of your ability, walking in the light that you have with the Torah, you're not going to be in that first load. You're going to come a little bit later. Okay, that's a whole other discussion. And the bride are those that had their garments ready. A lot of they were all sleeping. But not all had their garments ready. They didn't have all their lamps trimmed. I should have brought a little one of those little lamps. I have a couple at home. Um, and um, but they didn't have them ready. They weren't they didn't have their wicks trimmed and they did not have their so that they get the brightest light and get all that carbon off the top of the, of the wick and they didn't have it full of oil. Oil represents in the Torah, in the scriptures, both the spirit and the Torah. They didn't have their lives together. Some will, some won't. We want to be those who do. And that warrior bride is going to come back with him we read about that in Revelation 19, verse 1, this great congregation on horses with white, you know, they're going to meet Yeshua in the air, uh, I presume, the first heaven, not the third heaven, but it doesn't really say. They're going to meet him in the air and come down with him when he comes, and comes back to judge the world, the flesh, and the devil. And that will be when the judgments of wrath are poured out. And as I best understand, the battle of Armageddon and all of that, if we follow the order of events in the book of Revelation. So this bride who has prepared herself, there is so much more to being a bride and preparing yourself than coming to a congregation or a Bible study or a fellowship group and sitting in a chair and warming a chair. That's just a place where you come to get your batteries charged. That's the place you come to, to work out your differences with people, learn to walk it out with people. That's a community where there's accountability, where there's eldership and leadership, and we're a bunch of rebels. We don't like eldership and we don't like leadership. That's a whole other discussion. We're living in the time of every man does what's right in his own eyes. And if you don't like what the preacher has to say, you're out of there. And you go down the street until you find somebody who will tickle your ears. That's what we're, we're all guilty of this to one degree or another. We've all been there, done that. But I won't, I'm not going to beat that one. I'm not here to beat anybody up. I'm here to want to encourage people. So... But we need to get a little spice along the way. I don't want anybody to get too complacent. Oh yeah, we don't like the preacher, we'll tell him off. We'll get up and we'll tell him right off. We'll just get right up there because, I mean, we got it all figured out, don't we? Don't step on my toes. Don't tread on me. Remember, you know, that flag, you've seen more of that? Well, a lot of us need to walk around with that flag. Don't, don't tread on me. Well, I am going to tread on people with the word of Elohim. The sword is going to separate between flesh and spirit. Between the soul, the 
mind, will, and emotions, and the spirit. Not me, it's his word. I'm simply the messenger. But again, we got to get ready. I, I bring that up because this is the time to be doing that. Not walking in a fence. Well, I don't like the way sister and so-and-so said something to me, so I'm out of here. I'm quitting. I've resigned. I'm going somewhere else. There's a, I, as a pastor for 18 years, I have seen way too much of that. It really is disappointing. It's time, and I, that's a whole other talk. I'm not going to get into this one today. But we are not, by and large, we are not walking in the fruit of the Spirit. I got an email today. I'm, I'm going to get back to this being the king. I got an email today. Well, it wasn't an email. It was on my blog, a comment. And I had to respond to this person. <clears throat> And they were dissing the Christian church. There's way too much of that that goes on. We've all been guilty of it. It's a phase that immature Hebrew roots people go through. I emphasize the words immature. Immature. Dissing the Christian church. They have not grown up spiritually. And they have a pharisaical attitude. I understand that. I spent the first 30 years of my life in that mindset. Well, maybe when I was a baby I didn't know any better. But it took me a while to get out of that. Okay. I understand it. But this person was basically saying, there's nothing good in the Christian church. Constantine, Christianity, blah, 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 blah. And I wrote, wrote a reply on my blog to this person. I said, no, actually, there's a lot of good in the Christian church. You know, we got to be careful that we don't become arrogant because that's the worst sin of all. And that's the big sin that I've had to repent of. Wherever the Bible is preached, even if it's Balaam's ass that's preaching it, or the stones that will cry out, wherever the word is preached, the preacher may be a schmuck. He may be an adulterer and a drunkard and a liar, but when the word is preached, it does not come back void. It, it has a life of its own that's separate from the person preaching it or the denomination is preaching it. Yah will use it. Wherever the gospel is preached, and to whatever degree the light, even though it's mixed in with the chaff, and mixed in with the um, traditions of men, and even paganism, but the bits of light that are in there are powerful, that even the demons tremble. I've been there and done that in the name of Protestant Christianity. And trust me, the demons tremble. How much more so when spoken in, spirit, in, in a higher level of spirit and truth. Amen? Amen. And I told this person, hey, you, we, be, we got to be careful here. I agree, the majority that name the name of Messiah are not walking it. The, the church itself admits that. But those that are, look at all the good things that have been done. Because many of them were walking in the fruit of the Spirit. They have fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visited me when I was in prison, educated the people. That's more than I can say the Hebrew Roots Movement and the Messianic Movement is doing. They've preached the gospel. They've gone in and, 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 and healed the diseased. And lives have been transformed all over the world. Yeah, I know there's been bad that's gone on. We all know that. But there's been far more good than is bad. Because they were walking in the fruit of the Spirit to the best of their ability. And I'm just going to touch this and I'm going to get back to about the king thing. This is killing our movement because we're not walking in love. We have forgotten the weightier matters of the Torah. And I'm not going to, there's this a whole other discussion. I may give that one at Sukkot. I'll see. And I've talked about it before, but it's my heart cry. We don't have the anointing and the power that we should because we have forgotten to walk in love. How many of us are feeding the hungry? How many of you are feeding the hungry? Clothing the naked, going to prisons, 
Witnessing to your neighbors. I'm guilty. I've done all those things. But, you know, I'm, I'm, but I mean, how many of us have done those things? How many of you picked up drunks out of the gutter? Gone into bars. I don't want to advocate going there, but pulling people out that are caught up in there. The bar, you know, the bars are the devil's church. Yeah, that's where people go. The psychologists are the, well, they're not all bad, but the psychologists are the secular humanist pastors. Because the pastors and the leaders are not doing their job to heal the broken. They've got to go to secular psychologists. Oh my, we could go on and on about this. Go read Francis Schaeffer. No, we, we, have, you know, we are glutted with head knowledge. We know every way to tie seat seats. Where, where are my seat seats? Right here. We know every way. But we have forgotten. You know, the bride of you, the, the, the way to your marriage is the Torah. The bride has got to be walking in the spirit and the truth. Walking in the love. Without love, everything else we do is a clanging gong and a tinkling cymbal. Because it's not done out of a right heart. So let me get back to this bride thing and the king. We've got to have a higher view of what it is to walk out the Torah... We've got to have a higher view of ourselves and we've got to have a higher view of Yehovah Elohim. Do you really think he, the king of the universe, doesn't see through our crapola, our garbage, our chicanery, our sinfulness, our hypocrisy? Do you really think that he doesn't see how nice we act when we come to Shabbat services? But when we go home and we yell at our wife or kick the dog or yell at our husband or yell at our kids or we don't treat our neighbor properly or we walk in a fence or watching things on, on the internet that we should, or whatever, we're really not spending the time in Bible study and prayer and seeking the king and worshiping him. Oh yeah, we throw our hands up and speak in tongues at church. But when we go home, we're, we're sloppy and we're spending more time Doing this and doing this. And most of you are guilty of that. I'm not say all, but most of you are. You know it. This is the time to get ready. The point is, you are a king's kid. You were called for something higher. We were all called for something higher than what we're doing. Years ago, I did a teaching. And I don't know if it's still up on the, I don't know, I never made a video on it, but I think it still may be up on, the, on my blog or on the website. But Yah, it's a, I forget the exact title, but it goes something like this. If you are um, called to be a holy priesthood, then act like one. If Yeshua calls you to be a holy priesthood, then act like one. Back in the children of Israel, and they never fulfilled their destiny. But back in Exodus 19, verse 6, he calls them a kingdom of priests or kings and priests. And he says, you are an amsegula, a treasured possession. This, that, that treasured, amsegula is the Hebrew. It means a peculiar people or a, pecu a peculiar treasure that only kings have. You know, wealthy people, they collect art. I mean, I'm talking about the super wealthy. They collect art and they... They collect things that are that only wealthy people and kings, you know, have special things that none of us can even afford. That's how Yah, Yahweh Elohim, the creator of the universe, views his people. But I don't think we view ourselves that way. And then in the book of Deuteronomy, there are several places again where he calls his people Am Segula, treasured possessions. And then we go into the New Testament, the testimony of Yeshua. And in 1 Peter uh, 1, I think it's verse uh, 9, you are a royal priesthood, Peter calls the people. It's the same re re repeat of this concept of Am Segula. 
And then three times in the book of Revelation, starting in chapter 1, verse 10, and 5, and another, I forget the exact, I have to look in there. But he called you going to be kings and priests. Not everybody's going to be a king and a priest, or a kingdom of priests. What did the priests do? Well, we read it, it was in, it was in today, uh, in, in First Chronicles 14, or Second Chronicles 14, in our, uh, it was under um, Asa, King Asa of Judah. They had a spiritual revival. And it says today in our, in our scripture reading, how many of you read that? No, don't raise your hand. I don't want to be disappointed. I'm telling you. I've been pastoring for so long, I know that half of you don't do half the stuff you should. I know it. I know it. Yah knows it. But that's between you and him. But anyway, in... It, you know, and you want you want you want all. We all want the good things, but we don't want, and we want the high rewards, but we don't want to put out the effort because we don't believe we're a king's kid, or or king, or you know what I mean. If we get that in our hearts, we're going to be walking the higher walk. Amen. If we're the bride of Yeshua and a king's kid, I know we're kind of, you got all these metaphors floating around. So I, you know, I you're a bride and you're. A, King's kid, I, look, look, don't. Okay, we're 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 the the bride of we're the bride of Yeshua, but we're the we're the the king of of the Father, Elohim, the Father. You know, so it, it fits. But anyway, Asa, the priests were not teaching. They had the previous king had let that go down. They, the priests were not teaching the Torah. So Asa had a had a. Um, there were revival, and he got the priest back teaching these things. Teaching the people. You are a special people. And they got rid of all the, they got rid of almost everything. There were a few high places they left, but they got rid of all the, they even got, they even, I think they even killed the, his mother, Ma'aka, Ma or whatever her name was, because she had made an obscene image of Ashtaroth. It was probably a sexual image, most likely. And, and you know, and, and they, we got them all over the place. They put them up in this church and most other churches at Christmas time. They've got them in Washington D.C. the obelisks, and they got them on churches that have steeples on them. That's Baal and Ashtoreth, right there. It's everywhere you go. Anyway, so there was revival. Hallelujah! So they had a mini revival there in in, in Judah. But we've got to view ourselves as king's kids. You know, i got to tell you something about my background. I was having this discussion with Jared the other day. Where is he? Oh, back there. I see the top of the head. There. Oh, there. That's Jared. That's Caleb, my other son. Anyway, you know, i got to say, my, my religious background wasn't perfect. There was a lot of problems. But I want to tell you something, like we, like all of ours, you know, it wasn't perfect. I mean, I'm thankful for what I had, and I, it gave me a really good foundation, and it pointed me in the right direction. And I established good disciplines, so the, the good far outweighed the bad. But one thing my background taught me, they didn't say it in this way, but basically you're a king's kid. We, now, there was an element of arrogance, and a lot of people, my wife was raised Lutheran, and you know they had arrogance, and Catholics think they're the only ones, and everybody thinks they're special and they're the only ones. And we thought that too, you know. But anyway, but aside from that, we knew that what we had was special. We knew that understanding the Torah in a little deeper way, understanding the feasts and understanding the Sabbath and understanding the dietary laws, that meant we could not do the things that everybody else did. We couldn't go where, and go, what they, go where they went and ate the food they ate and do their holidays. Those three things alone separate you from the world. Just, it's a natural result. When I was growing up, I, I, I went to school, graduated right down the street here. 
many years ago, almost 40 years ago. And I, I, I didn't go to these things that happened on Friday night. I basically had no social life because they all happened on, the, on Friday nights and stuff. And so I spent my time working and reading my Bible and working around the family farm and, and that kind of thing. Well, that wasn't really bad for me. I'll tell you, the kids that go to all these social things, it has not helped them spiritually. They may have lots of friends, but you show me, you show me kids that are going to all these social things, and you show me kids that are reading their Bible every day and really deep with Jehovah. They may have a faith, but they're not real deep. They're lukewarm. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying they're put, they're all, they put a lot of emphasis on that. And I've seen it all around me. Because you're known by the friends you keep. And when your heart is inclined in that direction, you're going to be sucked down the path, down very easily. When you're going to their, their, their social events, doing their music and their dances and all that, it's going to pull you down. Someday you young people will understand what I'm talking about. You think I'm crazy right now. No, I'm not crazy. I know what I'm talking about. And you make excuses for yourself. The point is, is that the, God gave us these laws to separate his people. As Yeshua said, I'm going to be quoting scriptures to you. We're in the world, but not of the world. So when I was raised, I couldn't do all those things. Did I feel deprived? I feel a little bit lonely at times. Yeah. But I got through it. I lived in the book of Proverbs, the first eight chapters. That got me through the high school years. And I worked hard. And I was close to nature. And I was at Shabbat services every week. I didn't miss for anything unless I was sick, which hardly ever happened. And I was at all the feast days. And I didn't miss school, college, five years of college. I didn't miss a single one. Because that was my priorities. Didn't hurt me. But I was raised to believe that we are pilgrims and sojourners passing through. This is what I want to get at. That this world is not our place. So do not lean the ladder of your life up against it. Because you are special. You have been called. This is something that the church doesn't emphasize. But you have been called. Not everybody's been called yet. Everybody in their own order. But we have been called. Our eyes have been opened you got to get an, your eyes open to Yeshua, and, your, and then you have to have your eyes open to the Torah. There's levels of enlightenment. And it's not based on our intelligence or our good looks or anything we've done. It's by His grace. Now, we have to respond. Many are called, few are chosen. And I happen to be born into a family that my grandparents and my parents, they heard the call and they responded. It wasn't anything I did. And I was raised in that. I don't know if I would have found the truth if I hadn't been. I don't know. It's by His grace. So I'm very grateful. So we were raised to believe you are representing the truth with a capital T. There is truth with a small t, but there's a truth with a capital T. And that is the Torah and Yeshua, the living Torah. You young people, listen to me. You guys at the end down there, you listen. Listen, let it go in. I know, I know kids are good. They can, they can do things and they can listen at the same time. They, they have that ability. So you just, as you're drawing or whatever, sticking the pencil up your nose or whatever, um, be listening because this is for you guys too. Okay. <laughs> Always got a clown in the bunch. Anyway, uh, we love it. It's okay. Uh, but as a kid, I knew that I was special because I had something that the majority of the world didn't have. I had his truth. And that made me feel special on the inside. I also knew that I was destined for eternal life and to become a child of the king, king's kid. 
The church doesn't even teach that. They teach that, well, you die, you go to heaven, and you're, I don't know, become an angel or something. No, He made us in His image to become like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. He gave us the power. I'm quoting scriptures now. From Genesis all the way to the end, He gave us power to become the sons of Elohim. John chapter 1, 1 John 3 verse 1. We, shall, we don't know what we'll be like, but we shall see Him as He is, for we shall be like Him. He calls us sons, sons of the Most High. That means you're going to be part of the family of Elohim, not at the angelic level, but at that level. You're not going to, we're, none of us are going to be like Elohim. I mean, we're not going to be equal to that. He has, he has no beginning and no end, and He's forever. We had a beginning. We're not, but we're going to be part of His family. That is a truth. It's called the theosis. We're going to be, become part of that. That's what I mean when I be, say a king's kid. We have a, we are on a, uh, on a climb. We're climbing Jacob's ladder. We are making Aliyah. Or some people say Aliyah. I'm not sure which way it's supposed to be pronounced. But anyway, that means going up. Going up to keep the feasts. Because we are a people that's going up. You always went up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a little higher than the surrounding area. Whether you're coming up from the Dead Sea, boy, there's a metaphor in that one. Are you coming up from the Mediterranean to the west? Or are you coming up from the Negev and the Sinai Peninsula from the south? Or are you coming down from the Galilee? Samaria. You're still going up to Yerushalayim to keep the feast. To, to Bethel, the house of El, there on Mount Moriah. And that's where Yeshua is coming back to. So we are on this upward movement, moving and aiming toward the new Yerushalayim, which is coming down from heaven, heaven on earth. We are pilgrims and sojourners, sojourners passing through. This is not our habitation. This earth is not our habitation. We are seated with Yehovah in heavenly places. We've got to get that in our psyche. You know, I, when I was a kid, I didn't fully understand all the ramifications of this. But I knew I was special. I knew I had a call. I knew I was a king's kid. When I was your age, you little guys. And that reality, that uh, vision that I had in my heart permeated everything I did. Yes, it did. When I was mowing the grass, and I mowed a lot of grass, I made sure the lines were straight because I'm a king's kid. And everything I does, do, it needs to glorify him. When I was pulling weeds out of the garden or out of the flower beds, and there were a lot of them, I made sure I did a good job because I'm a king's kid. And that's a reflection of him. What I'm doing, I had that vision in my heart. I made my bed every morning nice and neatly because I'm a king's kid and I positioned the pillow just right because I'm a king's kid and somebody might walk into my bedroom and I want to make sure that it's, a, it's, 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 it's order. I had my clothes picked up all folded neatly in the drawer because I'm a king's kid. Man, a lot of us are sloppy and we blame other people for it. We got to get this. You know, this, this is how, as a young person, I recognized it. I mean, that's, that's where it started for me. I hung my towel up on, my, on the towel rack in the bathroom just perfectly because I'm a king's kid. This is a reflection of me. I kept my car when I got my first vehicle clean because I'm a king's kid. It might have been an old vehicle, but I still kept it clean and swept out, swept out because I'm a king's kid. A royal priesthood. And again, I didn't understand the full ramifications of it. I understand that now, or better. I walked, no, I didn't slouch over when I walked with my gut hanging out like this, like a gorilla. No, I was taught to walk 
with my head high, not arrogantly with my nose in, but with good posture. Yes, my parents taught me these things because you're a king's kid. You're an ambassador for the king. You know, an ambassador represents the, the country. He's in another country, but he represents the country that sent him. Well, we're ambassadors for the kingdom of Elohim. You know, Jeff, we were taught those things, weren't we? You know what I'm talking about. That was a good teaching. Now, some of it, for some of us, it went to our heads and we looked down our noses at other people, and that's not good. And there's a lot of that in the Hebrew Roots movement. Well, I know how to tie a tzitzit the Ashkenazic way or the whatever. Or I this or I that. Me, you know, I, I. We, we, we don't want to do that. We want to be thankful that He, in His mercy and grace, has called us. Oh, yes. Amen. And not look down our nose at anybody else, but value that calling and value that relationship and have a high view of Him. And He's calling us to come up and be with Him. Or He's actually coming down here, but you know what I mean. And we, when we have a higher view of Him, of His holiness or kadoshness, or set-apartness, and who he really is, then it's going to draw us up. And when we go up to keep the feasts, make, and have Aliyah in our hearts, and to be with his people, and, and or come together on Shabbat, and to be with his people, and bring, dress nicely, and bring good food, and all these things, because we're meeting with the king on his appointed time. This is a divine appointment, just Shabbat and the feast. We go where the king has told us to go because we're meeting with the king and we're meeting with other king's kids and king's daughters and sons. We're all part of the family. You see, there's a, there's, it changes your mentality. It makes you very humble to be called, but very grateful and also it, it makes you just it permeates through all areas of your life in everything you do, how you talk. I was taught to talk properly. I, I get sloppy like everybody else. But I was taught to articulate, to pronounce my consonants. My dad worked with me on that. Not clip the ends of my, and I get talking fast. It says talking fast, talking fast. I catch myself, but this, because I talk well, and because I try to uh, enunciate and pronounce my vowels and my consonants properly, it opens up doors to me in the business world that wouldn't normally open up if I was talking like I just walked out of the woods or out of a ghetto or out of this or that, where they didn't teach you those things. All of those things make a difference. Personal cleanliness. We took a shower or a bath every day, cleaned our fingernails, washed our hair, washed our clothes, because we're a king's kid. Changed the sheets on our bed, didn't sleep on dirty sheets that had been sitting in there for a month, or on the mattress, or whatever. We changed our sheets every week. Because we're a king's kid, and I'm not going to sleep in filth and squalor. And my parents didn't have a lot of money. But what we did have, we tried to take care of the things that we had. Because I want to be a good steward. You know what I mean? Take care of what I had. So, as we are hearing the king coming. I'm going to bring this to a closer. As we are hearing the king coming. Let's have a higher view of him. Yes, he's merciful and gracious, and he's not judging us based on how we dress and all of this stuff, and he overlooks a lot of faults. I understand that. But let's rise up to meet him. Let's rise up and come up. You know, this sloppy, agape, and gracie grease in the church, where come as you are, and stay as you are. Well, you might be able to come as you are, but we don't stay as we are. Yes. 
Because as his word cleanses us, cleanses us, emphasize that word, this stuff, we're like in a rock polisher. We go in rough and we come out smooth and polished. And it's, we spend a lifetime doing that. But we are the bride in training, the kings and priests in training, as Dr. Joe likes to say. So I want to encourage us all to have a higher view of him and a higher view of ourselves. Know who you are in Yeshua. Know what he has called you. Go online on hoshanarabah.org and pull under the Yeshua um, I think it's in that category under the teachings and pull off that sheet that says who I am in Yeshua and there's a series about a page and a half of 30 or 40 verses that say who I am in Yeshua and get that in your heart and your spirit that's who he calls you more than a conqueror um, you know I, I seated with him in heavenly places I can do all things. He supplies all my needs. I don't know. This, but I can't remember. There's a whole bunch of them. They're just the quotations of the verses throughout the Bible. And that's who we are as the king's kid. Amen. All right? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm already putting people to sleep, so I'll stop. No, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I yawn all the time because the air is stuffy in here. Okay, I get it. If I ever designed a church, it would have big windows and we could open it up and not put people to sleep because the air is stale and stuffy in this place. It's representative of bigger issues spiritually, but we won't get into that. But we're thankful to have what we have. So anyway, you are a king's kid. Think about that. And I would encourage you all, I'm going to put this up on YouTube tomorrow, by His grace, on the YouTube channel. And go back and listen to it. And sit back and... Not, not that I'm some great orator or some great whatever, but let the concepts, listen to it again if you can. Listen to it on Shabbat or on a Sunday, Sunday night or whatever, because we're getting ready for Yom Teruah on Monday. Listen to it. Let that sink in. Go back and listen to the preparing uh, I gave a few weeks ago. Boy, I can't believe it's already had over 2,000 views uh, prepare, uh, on the month of Elul, preparing. That one really took off. That's one of the, I think it's the last video I have up there. And anyway, it's 2,000 some odd, some odd hundreds of views. Well, hallelujah. I hope it's helping some people. I'm going to put this one up here too because this one is also preparing for the king because he's coming soon. Are you ready? I hope so. I want to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon his name. He is near, he is near, he is near. Yeshu Hashem Behim Atzov Hashem behi matzot kerahu.